Now for our fourth lesson on chapter 18, uh, today we're going to know and be able to apply the methods of integration by parts. Now I think you should think of this really as like a product rule for integration. We know if we have a product rule and we have to differentiate, we use the product rule. This is sort of something that's very similar for that. Now most of your questions are going to start with x times by something that's also in terms of x. Now it could be 2x times something in terms of x, or it could be like x squared times something. Most of them are actually just going to be x times something though. And this is going to be the formula that you're going to use, and this is the formula that's also given to you on your formula sheet. Now the way it's set up here is we've got two things times together, which is what we have here. So if I was actually doing this question, I would say let u equal x, and I would say let dv by dx equals this thing here. Now the idea behind this is when we actually integrate this, which is very difficult, if we use integration by parts, which is this part here, we end up with an integral that is easier to work out. Now specifically for this question, if I let u equal x, and if I was to differentiate that, du by dx would equal 1, and v times 1 is just v, therefore I would have an integral of just a single term, which should hopefully be easier than trying to do this with two terms. So let's go ahead and look at some questions. Now I did have some video links as well, so you could always investigate those and you should be able to click on those from my School Fusion page if necessary. So first of all, let's look at x secant squared x. So I'm going to let the first term be u and then the second term be dv. And then I have to work out the, inter the, sorry, the differential of this one and I have to work out the, in the integral of this one. Now, when it comes to the formula sheet, it's just going to say du rather than du by dx, so just be aware of that. And same for this. Instead of saying dv by dx, it's just going to say dv. So we substitute in. Sorry, write our formula, then substitute in. And the integral for tan we should actually know from the third lesson that we just did. So the integral of tan is, and you've got a choice of two, either the negative ln of cosine x or the positive ln of secant x, depending on how you want to look at it. Two negatives would cancel there, and we've got our answer straight away. So really the new part that I'm showing you today is the setup of this question. Writing it like this on the side of the page, substituting into the formula, but then appreciating that this should be something that's easy to work out. So tan x times 1 is just a single term, which is easier to work out than a product of two terms together. Uh, x cosine 3x. Now, actually, we haven't done an integration question with trig for quite a while. We've been using differentiation for product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, all that sort of thing. We haven't done an integration for a while. So I want this one to equal u, and I like this one to equal dv. So differential of x, just 1 again. Integral for cosine is positive sine from your formula sheet. But don't forget, you also got to divide by the derivative of 3x as well, which would be 1 third. So if we use our integration by parts formula, the formula is u times v, so x times 1 third is 1 third x sine 3x, minus the integral of v du, so this times this, and as we times it by 1, that's not actually going to have any effect at all. So the integral for sine is negative cosine. We also have to divide by the derivative of 3x, so when we divide by another 3, we're going to get a 1 ninth. And if we simplify here, the two negatives are going to combine to give us a plus. Now the third question, I would definitely put a big asterisk next to this one in your notes. This is one that they love to ask the question on. And the reason they like to ask it is, we let u equal x, we let dv equals the ln of x, and then we have to integrate the ln of x. The only problem is, you've never actually learned how to integrate the ln of x yet. So, we're actually going to switch the question around. We're going to let u equal ln of x. So we're actually going to switch it around. The reason we do that, we can differentiate the ln of x, as you can see. Also, though, we can actually integrate x as well and get x squared over 2. Now, the reason this is going to work is when we work out our second integral, we're going to get two terms that are going to combine here. Uh, so I've probably got a bad habit here that I'm not actually writing my formula down before I substitute in. And you should really do that. So when we work out this, x squared divided by x is just x, so we've got x over 2. And x over 2 is something we can definitely integrate. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new exponent, 
and we're finished. So just be a little careful with that question when you come to it. Now for the fourth one, the integral of ln of x, having said we don't know how to do that, we can actually work it out if we say the integral of 1 times ln of x. Now as you saw from the previous example, there's no point when this is dv by dx, otherwise we're going to have to integrate ln of x, which we don't know. So we're going to call this one u, and we're going to call this one the dv. And this is another one I think you should make sure you're very familiar with as well. So I've set up the whole one for this one, so you can see this in one go. But when you do the integral of v du, x times 1 over x, that's going to simplify to give us just 1. And the interval for 1 is x. And as this was um, an indefinite integral, don't forget to put the plus c on the end. Now the last question, I've added some limits on this and made this a definite integral. So I'm going to do uv minus v du again. I'm going to call x squared u. I'm going to differentiate for u, and I'm going to integrate for sine, so I get negative cosine. Substitute into the formula, and we get this, and everything looks okay at this point. And you've got to be careful about how you're going to integrate this. The reason this is a problem is this is also like a product. We've got 2x times y cosine x. So how do we integrate this? We actually have to do the product rule for a second time. Now before I do that, I'm going to simplify here. I've got two negatives, make a plus, and I can bring the 2 to the front of the integral as well. So now I have the integral of x cosine x, which is very similar to our second example today. So u equals x, dv equals cosine x. Work out the differential of the first one and the integral of the second one, and then go ahead and substitute those into the formula. Now I'm being very careful how I'm writing my answer here. I've got to do two times all of this integral. So I'm doing two times, and then I've got my brackets here. So I've got u, v, minus the integral of v du. And as du is 1, sine x times 1 is just going to be sine x. But now I have an integral that I can work out. So I did 2 times x sine x. I did 2 times the integral of sine x, which was negative cosine x, which gives me a positive. And then now I can go ahead and plug in my limits. And if you just want to check, you should end up with that answer there.